Next Move Group, the voice of economic development. Here is Chad Chancellor. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Next Move Group YouTube Economic Development Newscast, the voice of economic development. This is Chad Chancellor, co-founder of Next Move Group. And today I want to really start off with talking about some of the stimulus money. Last week, well, according to when you watch it is, maybe two weeks ago, the Department of Treasury came out with new guidance on how that stimulus money can be spent. Uh, I think it's 40 or 50 pages, but there were several different points in there that interested me from an economic development perspective perspective that I think you ought to know. We did a whole movement show on this for our members, so we're not going to get into as much as we did for them, but I do want to hit two or three for you. And so if you go to that, you can go to Department of Treasury and Google Stimulus Frequently Asked Questions. So this is the latest guidance. You go to 2.8. The question is, may recipients use funds for general economic development or workforce development? May recipients use funds for general economic development or workforce development? The answer from tre Treasury is generally not. It says recipients must demonstrate that funding uses directly address the negative economic impact of the COVID-19 health emergency, including funds used for economic or workforce development. It says, for example, job training for unemployed workers may be used to address negative economic impacts of the public health emergency and, and are eligible, but you just can't use it for what will be considered general economic development and workforce development. So keep that in mind. That was question 2.8 if you want to go look it up. 2.5 also interested me for economic developers. So I'm going to read this to you. It says, what types of services are eligible as responses to the negative economic impacts of the pandemic? So how can you spend money on the portion that can be spent on the negative economic impact? So it says, Eligible uses include assistance to households, small businesses, and nonprofits, and aid to impacted industries. Assistance to household could include, but is not limited to food assistance, rent, mortgage, or utility assistance. Additionally, counseling or legal aid to prevent with eviction or homelessness. Cash assistance, emergency assistance for burials, home repairs, weatherization, or other needs. Internet access assistance assistance to small businesses so if you think about using some of the money for small businesses it is it could be used like this it says assistance to small business and nonprofits include but is not limited to loans or grants to mitigate financial hardship such as declines in revenue or impacts of periods of business closures for example by supporting payroll you can support their payroll benefits cost cost to retain employees mortgage rent utility cost and other operating costs. You can do loans, grants, or in-kind assistance to help uh, with the prevention of mitigation tactics, such as physical plant changes, social distancing, enhanced cleaning efforts, so on and so forth. And you can provide technical assistance, including counseling and other services to help businesses. And then there were, let's see here, three more that really interested me. So, I mean, there was not 10 questions, but there are three more that interested me. So 2.13 interested me for you. May recipients use funds to pay back to work incentives, cash payments for newly employed workers after a certain period of time? The answer is yes. Yes, you can use that. You can use it for job training to accelerate rehiring. You can use it to help with child care assistance, transportation, or even literally incentives for newly employed workers. Two more that caught my eye, 4.9. And if you go in there, these are all organized, you know, 4.9. May recipients pool funds for regional projects? Can you pool your funds with others in your region for regional projects? And the answer was yes, provided the project itself is an eligible use of funds that you would have you know, been able to use on your own. You are able to do that. And then 6.5 says, what types of broadband projects are eligible? What types of broadband projects are eligible? Says the interim final rule requires eligible projects to reliably deliver minimum speeds of 100 Mbps download and 100 Mbps upload. So 100 download speed and 100 upload speed. But it says in cases where that is impracticable due to geography or whatnot, you must have at least 100 download and 20 uploads and make that where one day it's scalable to the 100 and the 100. So I guess most rural towns used to have 25 download, three uploads. So you can't just go replicate that. You got to go to 100, 100, or at least 100 over 20. So these are just four or five of the questions that caught my eye as an economic developer. You might want to know there's lots more information in there for mayors and, and the folks that are over the actual governmental entities. But as an economic developer, I thought these might interest you. You can put in 
U.S. Treasury frequently asks questions about the stimulus money, and this ought to pop right up for you. Bullseye our activities, we completed executive searches here in the last couple of weeks in Jefferson City, Missouri, Marshalltown, Iowa, Kilgore, Texas, and Victoria, Texas. So we're able to round out four of those. Just launched a new executive search in Carroll County, Iowa. You all probably have seen recently. I got a new one coming from Ohio here in a week or two. So we're really busy on that front. Also busy on our site selection front. We've got a big project we're working right now. And this week we had two or three more inquiries about maybe doing business with us. So that seems to be picking up as well. Let's hope this COVID Delta variant doesn't slow that down in any way. Our product of the month this month is really helping you help your companies find labor. That's what it's going to be. You'll be getting emails on this. So Historically, we've done labor studies for communities with our economic development expertise to you know, show them skills gaps, what they're going to have to pay and all. And of course, we've done executive searches, not only for economic development organizations, but even private companies. So what we want to do in August is combine those two so we can literally show companies in your town this is what you're going to have to pay to access the people you need, even if it's more than you think it is, even if it's more than you want. If you want it to be 20 and it's 25, we're at least going to be able to tell you that. We're going to be able to show the literal gaps of where you're not turning out enough people. So everybody blames the college and the education. You know, they're not turning out enough welders. We're going to be able to literally show you if you are or not. And if not, let you, you know, be able to go get a, pro, a plan together to do that. We're going to show you employers' best practices from around the country and incentives that companies are using to both recruit workers and retain them. And we're going to show them how to market their jobs to get eyeballs on it. We have real expertise in that. How do you get people, your target potential employees, looking at that job profile so they'll apply? So you'll be getting emails about that out this month. It's kind of combining our labor studies with our executive search marketing, what it's going to do to be able to show your companies how they can go out there and access that talent. And a bunch of you bought our staff training last month for our July product of the month. So we appreciate that. We'll probably bring that one back in four or five months and reopen that. It went so well, we'll probably end up bringing that back. So as I wind down, I'm in St. Louis today and the Cardinals have lost three or four in a row. I don't know how many. They're totally out of it now. Totally out of the race. They went out and traded for John Leston. He gave up five or six runs the first inning. I don't know why they didn't trade out, get some prospects. So, season is lost. It's time to start thinking about college football. Due to various demands on time and resources, economic development and trade and export agencies often struggle to complete effective market research and business outreach campaigns. For the past 10 plus years, Research FDI, along with our affiliated consulting groups at Research B2B and FDI 365, have leveraged our in-house knowledge, resources, and expertise in market research and consulting to help over 250 organizations directly facilitate inward investment attraction and new trade and export opportunities for their regions across a wide variety of industry sectors. Our highly personalized services and best cost to quality ratio in the industry ensures our client satisfaction, leading to repeat customers year after year. What are you waiting for? Leave the market research and business outreach to the expert team at Research FDI. To learn more about our services, contact us today.